Hi and welcome back to this workshop. I'm Jessica. Today I am going to show you how I make my hand enameled logoed keychains. Now these keychains, I start with a copper blank and it's just a round disc uh, made out of solid copper. And these that I found, they already had a little hole in them, which was perfect for the keychain size that I'm using. And I will put a link down in the description for those of you that are interested in the materials I'm using and the brands and whatnot. So check that out. But that is the base part of my project that I'm starting with. So the very first step involved is to take the copper blank and to counter enamel it. And what that is, is that's just applying a layer of enamel on the back and it lessens the stress on the metal uh, from being enameled on the front side. So a lot of people like to use a two to one ratio. So if there's gonna be two layers of enamel on the front, you wanna have one layer of counter enamel on the back and that just helps uh, relieve the pressure or the stress onto the metal itself. So I'm going to be doing two layers of counter enamel and I'm going to be using the opaque black. And so I start by just taking my clean metal and uh, if you have metal that's not yet been cleaned, you can clean it in a mild acid for a couple of minutes or you can use a scotch bright pad and get it real nice and clean and scrub it down so that it will be ready for the enamel to be applied. So since I'm working with a flat, I don't have to use a binder to hold the enamel on there. I can just use my sifter and sprinkle it directly onto the, right onto the piece. And I just have to hold it level so that it doesn't fall off. And I can give it a little tap uh, with my finger just on the edge to make sure that I get any enamel that's stuck in the little hole loose because I don't wanna fire the piece with enamel in the hole because that would cause it to uh, not be able to get the ring in there later on. The enamel would be stuck inside there. So after I've got the enamel on there, I can go ahead and set this onto the trivet and I can go ahead and heat it with a torch. Uh, there's a couple of different kinds of torches you can use. Um, you can use a map gas torch. You can use a, um, a large handheld butane torch. Uh, and I'm gonna use a oxygen acetylene torch, I believe. and use that to fire this. But again, any type of heat source really will work that's um, flame related. So once it's set on the uh, trivet, that's ready to be fired. And you wanna introduce the heat slowly, um, so, or indirectly at the beginning, that way you don't over, over stress the enamel, especially if there's already been layers on there, you can heat it too quickly and it'll um, make crack or fracture. So. I've got my first layer on there now. And now in order to add a secondary layer, I'm just going to use a Scotch-Brite pad and I'm gonna scrub the back off a little bit because there's gonna be fire scale on there from the torch. And I don't want that to just accidentally fall into um, my enamel as I'm applying the next coat. So I go ahead and scrub that down to get it clean. And it doesn't have to be super clean, just enough that there's not loose flux of fire scale there. And then I can go ahead and sprinkle on my next coat of counter enamel, which again, I'm just sticking with the black. And so I can apply that and then go ahead and torch fire that a second time. Now, once that process is done, I'm gonna go ahead and clean the, what's gonna become the front side. I'm gonna go ahead and clean that one more time with the scotch bright pad. And I wanna get fairly clean, but I don't necessarily have to remove all the darkness from the fire scale, just the loose pieces, because I'm going to be coating the front of that with a opaque white, and so that you're not going to see the actual copper through that. So for the front side, now we're moving on to our first, our base coat that's gonna be underneath our other colors. And I'm just doing white uh, just to give it more pop when I apply the other colors. It'll make it a little brighter being on the white instead of the um, just the copper itself because copper has a tendency of darkening the other colors that are applied on top of it. So now that our first base layer of white has been applied, it is now ready. Um, it does not necessarily have to be cleaned any further at this point. You can use your scouring pad and come along and clean up uh, the edges a little bit if you need to or a lot of enamelists um, use alundum stones in between. You can either do that at the very end and just if you want a brightened edge, you can use that or if the enamel is kind of stuck there and it needs a little bit clean, you can do that. But for these, I haven't been doing that and I've just been moving after I've got the white, 
white base coat on, I'm ready to apply the, the main colors you're gonna see. So the three colors that I'm using, cause I'm causing a gradient, is I'm using goldenrod yellow, flame orange, and flame red. So I just use my sifters here and I have them laid out on the table all next to each other. And if you have three sifters that it makes it a little easier instead of having to um, keep emptying out your sifters and then filling it with a new color to continue the process. But I can go ahead and sprinkle on the red first if I want to, and then like kind of do that on the lower half of the project. And then towards the middle, I can do the flame orange. And then at the very top, I'm gonna sprinkle on a bit of the goldenrod yellow. And I just try to space it out a little bit so you can see a nice gradation of color between all of the pieces. And try to keep the thickness um, similar. You, like you don't want one to be extra thick on one side and the other side to be like real thin. So just try to keep the amount of enamel sprinkled on in each area similar. And again, that's where it would help if you had sifters of uh, all the same size too. I probably would recommend the, the medium size for that. So after that has been applied, it's ready to be fired again. So it goes back on the trivet and go ahead and get the torch and uh, heat that up to like a low red. And that way the enamel is good and um, it's gotten past the sugar coat stage and into like a, a fiery, a fired like kind of a gloss. It'll have a nice, nice smooth coat for that. Now for the next step, I am actually going to be using a stamp that I've had made of our logo. And I had a seller on Etsy make these for me. And uh, it's just a custom stamp and it, it turned out really nice. So I'll make sure to put a link to that down in the description if you're interested in having your own custom stamp made. But you could also just use any stamp that you like for this process. So I take my stamp and I'm going to put it on a Versamark ink pad. Um, they call this a watermark stamp pad. It's basically just clear and that way you can use it to uh, hold the enamel in place, basically just where you stamp. So you take your stamp, you press gently on the ink pad, and then you press onto your enameled piece and try not to wiggle it back and forth because you want it to be a nice crisp image. And then um, after you've pressed it on there, pull it loose gently and then you can look at the image and see if you got got it on there straight or if you need to you can always wipe it off and then re-stamp it and then from there you go ahead and take your sifter with whatever color you want the stamping to be in in which my case i'm going to go with the black and then sift it just on top of the keychain and it's going to cover the whole piece at first but then you turn it over sideways and uh, you knock it on the edge and so what that does is it knocks loose all of the excess powder where the stamp is not, and it leaves it stuck to uh, the, the wet stamped area, which will work out perfectly. Now, if you find that um, your stamp has too many details, it may cause kind of a little bit of blurriness on your image. Um, so the kind of a more simpler, the better when it comes to stamping, especially if it's real small. But you can also take a paintbrush, just a dry paintbrush, and you can use it to kind of clean up your image. You can come along and sweep any extra enamel that's on there that um, just kind of causes a little bit like dirty looking to your, uh, to your keychain and just knock it loose because only where the enamel grains are when you fire the piece is where they're gonna stay. So you can do that to clean up your image. And then uh, at this point, it is, really close to completion. Now, if you want it a little darker, you can go ahead and repeat that process. Go ahead and stamp again. Um, make sure really carefully that you line up your stamp exactly where it had been previously. And then again, to do the cleanup with the paintbrush. And you can fire that one final time with your torch and uh, if you want it extra dark and that works good. And then from this stage, it is, it'll be done and you're done with the enameling part. So you can go on to uh, some cleanup if you need it. Sometimes the trivet, it will leave marks on the back of your, uh, your piece when it's fired, just where it's touching right there. And you'll find out if you get some ridges like that, you'll wanna come along and clean those up. And uh, a good way of doing that is with the alundum stone. And this is um, basically made that it's for grinding glass. And so you get this, you get your piece wet and you can use that to work down any uh, bits of area where 
the glass is sticking up. And you can also use that just right along the edges. You just kind of right, go across at an angle a little bit and it will clean up the edges if you want something that's nice and shiny. So once you, the enameling portion is done, you're ready to just go ahead and assemble the key ring onto it. And the ones I purchased um, basically was just ready to go. They already had the ring on there and they had the chain and the little jump ring. So it was perfect, the perfect size for the hole on this pen, on this uh, keychain. So all I had to do was uh, pry it up, put it through, and there you have it. Then you have a completed keychain. So that's how I made my keychains. Um, these particular ones, I'm gonna have about 50 of them for sale on our website. So if you're interested, uh, check the link down in the description and you can go purchase them and the price will be $15 on those. And uh, again, I've used this process um, here and there. Uh, you can also use it for jewelry. You can use, uh, if you have a kiln, you can also do bigger pieces. You can do bowls and things like that and do the enameling process. The nice thing about the torch is it takes very few it takes very little things to get started. So, I mean, you'll need a torch, you'll need a sifter, you'll need a trivet, you'll need, you know, some tile or something to keep it fireproof, uh, your workstation. But it, it really does take a very minimal amount of materials that you can start and you can kind of play with the enamels. And like these two ounce jars here, um, this will last for a fair bit of, piece, of pieces, especially if you're doing a small, small project. And those are run about 10 to 15. 10 to 15 dollars depends on the color they kind of um it varies on the manufacturing process you know their cost and things like that but if you've gotten into enameling or if you've tried it let me know down in the comments what kind of projects you've done when i've done some of these enameling videos in the past people have mentioned the projects they've done and uh and how they're interested in trying it and different things like that so i'd love to hear how it's coming along for you and uh Again, make sure to check out our website if you're interested, or if you want to get into enameling, check the description below. There will be some resources for you there. So thank you for watching this video. I hope to catch you on the next time. Have a blessed day. Hi, just wanted to throw one more quick note in here. We do have a giveaway going on for a blacksmith guillotine tool, and the entries for that are running until August 29th, 2019. To get entered to win, you go to www.blacksmithpdfs.com, and you can get a free download, a paid download, uh, purchase a keychain, any, anything like that will get you entered to win. And we are having our giveaway on August 30th, 2019. And between 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern time. And we will announce the winner. Plus we'll have some other door, prize, door prizes going on. So make sure you join us. We hope to see you there. Have a great day.